Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Thursday live stream. So today we're going to talk about uh, um, two subjects, or actually one subject that you really shouldn't talk too much about, which would be politics. And I'm going to make another bad decision and talk about what's going on because I think that uh, everybody should know what's going on in politics as it relates to Bitcoin, crypto, and the digital asset space. But before we get to that, I uh, am well aware that the market is not doing so hot, so we'll take a look at there. But first of all, the market itself. Not the greatest, I must say. And uh, over the last 24 hours, I mean, Bitcoin's hovering around 66, might well, probably go lower, who knows? 65, 64, I have no idea. There's gonna be a lot of people that will tell you they know where it's going, but it's a good educated guess. Let those guys do what they wanna do. Me personally, I always look at this as like, well, opportunity. And uh, it's just the same thing happening over and over again. People buy, they try to buy low, then they try to sell high and they try, then they get nervous because they hear about some news and some different narrative. And there's always a narrative that you can put in to fit what's going on or a story to fit the narrative of what's going on and why the market is doing what it does. But in reality, it might just be a bunch of manipulations and whales and things that we might never know about. But of course, the market, yeah, new and not so hot. We actually talked about this today in the NFA live show, uh, me, Guy, and Ben. I put a link in the description to talk about that. Ben and Guy gave a pretty good assessment. Actually, Ben and Guy got a good assessment about uh, CPI numbers and uh, Fed and, and rates and, and uh, if they're going to be slashing or not, which they, we know they're not. But then moving forward, uh, what that means. So check out that video. Uh, links in the description. We can go from there. So today, what I want to talk about is let's just leave it at the door. The market's going to do what the market's going to do. Let's see what's going on behind the scenes. So Biden, President Joe Biden, if you're not from the United States, oh, you're missing out. It's a great country. It's my favorite personally. But uh, we've got a uh, presidential election coming up in November. Right now we have three candidates, essentially. We have uh, the current, the incumbent, President Joe Biden, and we have the challengers, Donald J. Trump and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And I had put this out, oh gosh, yesterday? Um, yesterday, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, yeah, just yesterday. And I said, look, uh, I'm putting this out because this is what's going on with uh, Donald J. Trump. And uh, I've already talked well about uh, Robert Kennedy. And if, if Biden posts anything positive, I'll let you know. So this is what uh, he said. He said, hey, I'm just letting you know that uh, Bitcoin mining may be our last line of defense against a central bank digital currency. Biden's hatred of Bitcoin only helps China, Russia, and the radical communist left. We want all the remaining Bitcoin to be made in the USA. It will help us be energy dominant. I was like, eh, that's nice. Let's see what he does about it, right? So this will lead me to my next point, Biden. So this came out just yesterday. And uh, excuse me, just came out, yeah, just late yesterday. And just so you know, if, if you're going to vote Biden, I'm here to judge you. I don't care who you vote for, right? This isn't... Uh, voting advice, but Joe Biden's campaign is in talks to accept crypto donations through Coinbase Commerce, the block reports. So there you go. Positive movements by the Biden administration to accept Bitcoin and crypto. Or is it? You got to understand, like when you do this, when you give any kind of donation to a political figure, it doesn't matter that is a, a president uh, elect, if that is a, a runoff, if that is a senator, a congressman, congresswoman, it doesn't matter. If you make a donation here in the United States, you have to give all your information. That's fine. I mean, if you want to do that. So for all donations that you have to give, how great is that for the Biden administration, who, let's be honest, is not the most positive on crypto. This looks very positive. But just so you know, if you happen to but give them Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever token. Uh, you have to fill all your information, give your wallet address and go from there. And it's not anonymous, but that's just what it is. So I applaud the Biden administration for wanting to soak up uh, crypto and assets from everybody. Great. Everybody's happy now. I said something positive about Robert F. Kennedy. I think he's probably the strongest candidate for crypto. I said something strong about Trump. And I say something eh, relatively positive uh, uh, about Biden. And then just to go back to this tweet here, I found it interesting that, you know, Trump talks about miners, but what is he doing? Well, this is what he's doing. So this was from uh, Fox News. I know some people, it's a very right-leaning uh, organization, let's just be honest. But uh, listen to this. This is about a, this is a minute long. 
And uh, this is what's going on. Let me make sure that you can actually hear this. We go from there. Take a listen. At 2 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. When we get the minutes. You know, Donald Trump met with heads of several crypto mining companies. Yeah. Oh, who did he meet with? Which ones? So, uh, Any idea what he said? According to the CEOs who posted about this dinner last night at Mar-a-Lago with Trump, it's the CleanSpark CEO and the CEO of Riot Blockchain. Look, there is a stark contrast between Trump and Biden right now. Biden wants to tax the miners' electricity use by 30 percent, and he slams their emissions, right? And then Trump comes in and he's praising them for, quote, stabilizing the energy grid and supporting jobs. Mm -hmm. This is what Trump said last night on Truth Social. Bitcoin mining may be our last line of defense against a central bank digital currency. Biden's hatred of Bitcoin only helps China, Russia, and the radical communist left. Uh, yeah, so that's where it comes out. So like, look, I mean, it sounds like he's making a good case and he actually meets the Bitcoin miners and I have to applaud him because I mean, I think that's how we're gonna get ahead. I just don't know just how far the US dollar will go. And I think when you take a look at this, I think I think a, a couple of sides get it. I think Robert F. Kennedy Jr. gets it. I think Donald J. Trump gets it. Not so sure about the Biden administration, but I'll leave that in for, to you to comment in the comment section. But it is concerning because when he talks about this, he's like, look, we need to have this now. We need to have this here in the United States. We need to take control. And it makes me wonder from stories like this. Now this just came out today, but I've been hearing this rumblings about this for a bit. Saudi Arabia ditches the US dollar and will not renew the 50 year petrodollar agreement with the United States. Saudi Arabia will now sell oil in multiple currencies, including the Chinese renminbi or RMB, euros, yen and yuan, instead of exclusively in US dollars. So look, you can take this any way you want to. Maybe they start to accept yuan, the RMB, euros, and they just transfer everything over into the US dollar. Or maybe they take those and they start to actually uh, transact with the other BRICS countries, with China, with Russia and everybody else, and they start to use those currencies. It makes a lot of sense of why they'd want to get away from it. It's because the US loves to put sanctions on it. And if you were a sovereign nation, what would you want to do? Again, US dollar is still strong. US dollar is what everybody transacts in, but things are a changing. So when I take a look at that and I see what could be, I think to myself, I hope somebody gets it right. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then also, I just want to remind everybody that we are early. I know if you've been around for crypto for quite some time, I've been around since 2017, which is really not that long if you think about it, because I know people have been around since 2011, 2010, which is kind of crazy. But uh, we're super early still. And I remember getting into the, the internet day days and uh, people thought we were far along in late 2000 and we really weren't or excuse me early 2000 now everything's so much more advanced so here's what we have this was from bitcoin magazine 60 million customers at brazil's largest bank can now start buying bitcoin and crypto and we've said this before we talked about this this is just a stepping stone and this is what's going to happen banks are losing ground and not just for crypto and assets, but if you take a look at the reports put out by the major banks, as far as like the foot stores, the physical address locations for banks, they're reducing greatly. And it's because things, they don't really need a bank as much as possible. So they're always looking for different avenues of revenue. One of those would be uh, to allow them to be exchanges and to actually purchase Bitcoin, crypto, and digital assets. But I will warn you, and this is, what, how it's gonna happen, I think. There's a way that it should be, and there's a way that it's gonna be. And the way that it should be is most people should understand about cold storage and cold storage devices and how to actually use it. Me personally, I like to use Tangent. There's a link in the description, there's a banner right there. And it makes things very super simple. That's how things should be, especially if you take a look at Mt. Gox and FTX and Celsius and Voyager and BlockFi. That is the important part about cold storage. That's the way it should be. Here's the way it's gonna be. People are do not have the confidence in themselves to custody their own assets. For some reason, they just feel like they can't do it because they've been brainwashed and they just, they just can't get, get into it. 
And I, I get it, right? If you're like, you know, single mom, three jobs, trying to do everything, juggling life and work and everything else, good luck, right? So the way that it's gonna be is that banks are gonna be in here and they're going to actually custody crypto digital assets. And when that happens, watch out, because then we're gonna really take off. This is one of those things that I think it's just going to be. And also, as far as like talking about how early we are, this is the last thing and we'll get in Q&A, is this was an interesting video from uh, Mike Germano. And he says this, he goes, I'm at my son's elementary school graduation. Actually, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have you listen to this. Let me uh, get there so you can actually hear this. 20 seconds. How sad. Uh, so that was a little clip of, they just asked the kids what they want to do when they grow up. And uh, a lot of kids, myself included, would probably have picked the other one, which would be like they said, athletes and doctors and firefighters. And I'm not gonna take any away from that, that those professions, great professions, it takes a lot of time, a lot of dedication to, to really get to that level, doctor, firefighter, athlete. But it's just kind of funny that, you know, like this, this kid's response is, I wanna be, a, I wanna own a Bitcoin mining operation. This kid will be a billionaire by the time everybody grows up. But everybody laughs at it like, ah, that's silly internet money, and that's where we're at. So, look, if you don't think we're early, <laughs> I, th I still say we're still early. And then lastly, uh, I would uh, encourage everybody, first of all, check out NFA Live, but also I got to sit, sit down with uh, your friend Andy, who is a Bitcoin miner, Bitcoin mining operations, and, and does a lot of things with passive income. And I met him up. I met up with him at Consensus just, uh, gosh, two or three weeks ago, or whatever it was, over in Austin. And we talked about essentially where things are going, and then taking profits. And we really dug into that aspect. So, if uh, if you have time, I link this in the description. Take a listen to this. It's the same thing that we talk about here, but a little bit more in depth about where things are going, and then moving from there. But that's it for today. So, look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. 